The Yule-Walker equations describe a very important property of autoregressive models for time series. Remember that an autoregressive model views a random signal as the output of a linear time invariant system in response to white noise input. And for the autoregressive case, the linear time invariant system is an all-pole system. Specifically, the Yule-Walker equations relate the autoregressive model parameters, those are the coefficients of the linear time invariant system, to the autocovariance of the random process. And for this derivation, we're going to assume that the process is zero mean, so the autocovariance and the autocorrelation are one and the same quantity. So one of the things you can do with the Yule-Walker equations is estimate the autoregressive model parameters from data. So if I'm given a time series x of n, I can estimate correlation or the covariance sequence for that time series. And then because I have a relationship between the autoregressive model parameters and the autocovariance sequence through the Yule-Walker equations, I can solve those equations to find the unknown parameters of the autoregressive model, the a sub l, the coefficients of the denominator polynomial in the frequency response, and sigma squared, the white noise variance at the input. Now, the Yule-Walker equations do not directly address how one chooses the model order, capital N. And in practice, this is usually done when you're given data by balancing the error that the model generates against the number of parameters in the model because it's easy to drive the error smaller and smaller by increasing the order but that requires a greater number of unknown parameters in the model and at some point we want to have a balance so there are some criteria that have been proposed and those are not the subject of this lecture but if you want to look, check those out there's the Akeike information criterion or AIC the Bayesian information criterion is another approach, and both of these basically look at the squared error associated with fitting the model to the data and then add a penalty factor based on the number of parameters in the model, in other words, something proportional to n, and try to minimize that quantity, the squared error plus the penalty factor. And there's also cross-validation where one uses a subset of the data to estimate the model and then see how well the model predicts the remainder of the data and uses the prediction error on the remainder of the data to determine what's the appropriate model order. So we're going to start with the definition of the autoregressive model. Remember that if x is a time series, then the autoregressive model says that the sum from k equals 0 to n of a k x of n minus k has to be equal to Wn, where Wn is the white noise process that's the input to the linear time invariant system, and we're going to restrict the zeroth order A to be equal to unity. To get the Yule-Walker equations, we're going to multiply both sides of this relationship that we started with by x of n minus L and take an expectation. So we'll have the sum from k equals 0 to n of AK times the expected value of x of n minus k times x of n minus l, and that is going to have to be equal to the right-hand side of the equation, which now becomes the expected value of wn times x of n minus l. This first expectation just involves the data times a shifted version of the data, and that's the definition of the autocovariance function. So if we apply that definition, we get rxx of l minus k. Now on the right-hand side, we've got the present value of the white noise input, and if L is positive, then X of N minus L represents past values of the output of the filter. And since the white noise is independent from time sample to time sample, a past value of the output is unrelated to the present value of the input. So this becomes zero on the right-hand side when L is greater than zero. And when L is equal to zero, it actually becomes equal to sigma squared, the variance of the white noise Wn. And you can see both of these by rewriting our first relationship that we had up here to solve for x of n minus L. And we'll say then that that's equal to the sum from k equals 1 to n of ak x of n minus L minus k plus W of n minus L. 
And so you can see that when L is equal to zero, and we replace x of n minus L by these two terms here, that the first term goes away because again, we're dealing with past values of the data and a present value of the noise. And then we have the present value of the noise. So that's where we get the sigma squared. So we can summarize this relationship. It says that the sum from k equals zero to n of the ak, the parameters in the autoregressive model, times rxx of l minus k, this being the autocovariance or the autocorrelation of the process, is equal to zero for l greater than zero, and it's equal to sigma squared when l is equal to zero. And of course, we still have that a zero is equal to one. So when l is greater than zero, I can take the zero with the k equals zero term in this sum and move it to the right hand side, subtract it, and we have the sum from k equals one to n of ak rxx of l minus k equals negative rxx of l. Now this relationship I can write out in terms of a matrix vector form, and we're gonna do that by having different equations associated with each value of l. So this applies for l greater than zero, so I'm gonna start with the equation when l is equal to one. So when L is equal to one, I have, beginning with K equals one, I have A1 times RXX of zero. So I'll put A1 in a vector here, and RXX of zero is this first entry in this matrix, plus A2 times RXX of one minus two, so that's RXX of minus one. So here I have A2 RXX of minus one. And if we continue that all the way to N, I end up with a sub n times rxx of one minus n. And that has to be equal to negative rxx of one. I've written the equation for L equals one as the first row of this matrix times this vector of autoregressive parameters, a n. And then on the right hand side, I get just the first element in a vector here associated with the L equals zero term. Now we're gonna to go to L equals two for the next equation. And in this case, I have A1 times Rxx of one plus A2 times Rxx of zero. And continuing on till we get to the nth term in the sum, and we have An times Rxx of two minus N, and that has to be equal to negative Rxx of two. So we'll have that on the right-hand side. And continuing, for the case when L is equal to capital N, then we obtain Rxx of N minus one times A1, Rxx of N minus two times A2, and et cetera, to Rxx of zero times An, and that has to be equal to negative Rxx of N. So we have a system of linear equations here that relates the autocovariance sequence of the signal to the autoregressive parameters, the a1 through a n. We have n equations and n unknowns, and these are the Ewell Walker equations. So you can see from these, if I know the R's, the autocovariance, the autocorrelation of the process, I can solve for the A's. And I can also obtain sigma squared by considering the case when L is equal to zero. Once I know what the A's are, if I substitute the a's in, and again, knowing the rxx values, when l is equal to zero, I get sigma squared. Now, if we collect all those parameters into symbols r for the matrix of correlation coefficients, as on the previous page, a for the vector of autoregressive parameters, and r for the vector on the right-hand side of correlation coefficients, then we have this compact notation for the Ewell Walker equations. They basically say in matrix form, the matrix R times vector A has to be equal to negative the vector R. So you can see that it's very simple to solve those. If we invert the matrix R, then we obtain A. And once I have that A, I can solve for sigma squared by substituting those values of A into the L equals zero case for this equation on the top of the previous page, and that will then give me the value of sigma squared. There's a MATLAB command that does all this, and it's called ARUL. 
and it will take the data, estimate the correlation coefficients or the covariance function, again assuming things are zero mean, those two are equivalent, and from those it will give out the parameters, the A's of the autoregressive model as well as sigma squared. So we'll conclude with an example and here's a hundred samples of a random time series and it looks sort of like it might have some resonant behavior. You see there's some oscillations positive and negative going on here which suggests that there might be a resonance in this random process. So we're going to try fitting this with an autoregressive model and we'll use the ARUL command in MATLAB to do that. Now I'm going to take 200 values of this random process x of n and use ARUL to get several different autoregressive models. The first one I did was I assumed that the order of the model was n equals 2. When I solve the Yule Walker equations, we get the autoregressive parameters are 1, of course a0 has to be equal to 1, then this is a1 is negative 0.9956, a2 is 0.8217, and sigma squared in this case is 0.7319. I can look at the power spectral density associated with this autoregressive model by taking those parameters and putting them into the expression for the frequency response of the autoregressive model, magnitude squared in the denominator, Remember, sigma squared was the variance of the noise at the input to the linear time invariant system. And when you compute this and plot it, you see that the autoregressive model has a large apparent resonance in the vicinity of one radian per second. It does indeed appear to have some resonant behavior based on this, this fit. Now if we increase the order to an order 4 autoregressive model by choosing n equal 4, we get a new set of autoregressive coefficients, 1, negative 1 1.7148 for A1, and then we have A2 here, A3, and A4, and then the variance of the noise at the input, sigma squared, is 0.25. And this value is actually the variance of the W of N, which can also be regarded as the error for the autoregressive model, and you see we've got a pretty significant drop in the error from 0.73 to 0.25. It's almost a factor of three drop, and when you look at the power spectral density associated with this model, we see all of a sudden here there's evidence of two resonances, one in the vicinity of pi over 4, and then the other uh, somewhat higher around uh, 1.4 radians. So we've got evidence of two resonances. Now then I also went to the case of n equals 6 and you'll notice here that now we get six autoregressive coefficients a0, a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, and a6 and our noise variance at the input is 0.2523. So in this case it's only slightly smaller than what we had for n equals 4 so the n equals 6 model is not giving us much improvement in terms of the error of the model. And actually, if you look at these last two terms here, they're both pretty small. So a5 and a6 are pretty small, suggesting that up through a4 may be sufficient. Now, it doesn't always work this way that you get small coefficients here. It just happened out in this particular example. The power spectral density associated with the sixth order model looks very similar to that of the fourth order model as we might expect given the similarity of the coefficients and the errors and again we see evidence of two resonances. The height of the peaks is slightly different but the height of these peaks tends to be fairly sensitive because that's determined by how close the poles of this system are to the unit circle and slight perturbations in the coefficients can cause the poles to move closer or farther from the unit circle. When you're looking at 1 over 0, a small change can cause a fairly big change in the peak amplitude. So that's nothing to really pay much attention to. So the Yule Walker equations give us a relationship between the autocorrelation or the autocovariance of the process 
and the autoregressive model parameters, and thus given data can be used to obtain an estimate of an autoregressive model for that particular data, like we did here in this example.